In this video, we're going to use a WebSocket connection to transmit data between two ESP32 in real time. One of the ESP32 will be connected to a sensor and the other to an OLED screen, and the data will be transmitted between a WebSocket client and a WebSocket server. As usual, I'll go over all the steps that are needed to assemble the hardware, write the software using the Arduino IDE, and run it on each one of the boards. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They are a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. And one thing that sets them apart is that they're not a broker. Instead, they're a fully featured PCB manufacturing and assembly house offering a wide variety of services. Those include advanced PCBs like Flex and Rigid Flex, and also assembly and design of your printed circuit boards. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for the design, manufacturing, and assembly of your printed circuit boards. For this video, I'll use a couple of ESP32 development boards in the Wemos form factor. I'll also use a couple of 2x1 baseboards so that I can mount everything together. I'll connect a BME680 environmental sensor to one of them using a prototyping shield. And then for the other ESP32, I'll use an OLED shield to display some data. As usual, you can find all of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I'll start by assembling the different boards that'll be connected to the BME680 sensor. The process involves some soldering, but is pretty much straightforward. If you already know how to do this, you're welcome to skip ahead in the video to the next section. With the soldering finish, I can connect all the boards together and connect the ESP32 board to one of the USB ports in my computer. I can then move on to the software side of things, so I'll start by navigating to the demos repository for the ESP8266. I'll copy over to my desktop a sketch where I was using WebSockets to transmit the color values of the background of a screen. I'll go ahead and rename it, open it up in the Arduino IDE, and start modifying it so that it can work with an ESP32. I'll also get rid of some of the old libraries and install new ones. For this, I'll use the Tools menu option to open up the Library Manager. I'll install a WebSockets library that includes both a server and a client. We'll set up a WebSocket server with a board that's connected to the sensor. I'll also install the library that I need to communicate with the BME680 sensor. As with most of the sensor libraries from Adafruit, I'll also need to install the unified sensor library. With all the libraries installed, I can now include them in my sketch. Then I can move on to initialize my network parameters and also declare a variable for holding the sensor interface object. I'll also make some simple modifications to the web page that's served by the web server running on this ESP32. The web page includes a WebSocket client that's written in JavaScript. 
For this demo, we'll just have it log any messages that come through the WebSocket to the console. Whenever a web client makes a request over HTTP, the web server running on the CSP32 will send them the page. As for collecting data from the sensor, we'll simply use the ticker library to call a function at a predetermined interval. Another thing we need in the setup function is to initialize the communication with a sensor. We'll call the begin method of the class and use one of the included examples for copying over the configuration parameters. To handle any responses from the clients connected to the WebSocket, I'll use a callback function named WebSocket event. Lastly, as I mentioned before, the read data function will be called periodically using the ticker library. This function simply sets a flag to true, and when that flag is set, in the loop function we'll be able to collect data from the sensor. That being said, I'll go to the loop function and make the necessary changes to the original sketch so that we can work with the BME680. I'll follow what we had before and construct a JSON formatted string containing the data that will be sent out over the WebSocket. I'll finish up the sketch by defining the WebSocket event function, which will simply print out any incoming messages on the WebSocket to the serial monitor. With those changes in place, I'll go ahead and select the correct board and port from the tools menu option, upload the sketch, and open up the serial monitor. If everything goes well, I should be able to see the JSON formatted string printed out. And to test out if the sensor is working correctly, I can just place my finger on top of it and see the measurements change. Now for the real test, we'll need a WebSocket client. And as we don't have the second board quite ready yet, I can simply go on my web browser, navigate to the IP address of the CSP32, and have that client that's included on the web page running on my computer. For seeing the output of the WebSocket client, I'll have to go through the developer tools, open up a console, and see the incoming messages there. If that looks good, I can move on to building the WebSocket client with the second ESP32. I'll put the boards together and connect the ESP32 to a second USB port on my computer. Then, as I've shown before, I'll use the terminal to use a command line utility to open up a second instance of an Arduino IDE. That way, I can use two IDEs at the same time for two separate boards. As a sanity check, I'll open up a new sketch, go through the tools menu option, and select the second port available on my computer, upload the empty sketch, and if I go back to the other instance of the Arduino IDE, I should be able to open up the serial monitor and still see data from that board coming in. With that quick test being done, I can worry about writing the new sketch for the WebSocket client. Instead of starting from scratch, I'll go to my demos repository for the ESP32, open up the file that we use for the infrared thermometer project, and copy over the code. I'll save the file with the name ESP32 underscore OLED and get to work with making some changes. I'll remove the libraries that were used to communicate with the old sensor, include a couple new ones for connecting to Wi-Fi and establishing the WebSocket client connection, and use the tools menu option to open up the library manager. I'll search for the Arduino JSON library and go ahead and install it. We'll use this library to parse the data that will be coming in as a JSON formatted string. As usual, I'll define a couple of constants to hold my network ID and password, declare a variable for holding the WebSocket client object, and another one to hold the JSON document object. I'll remove the old code dealing with the sensor, initialize the WebSocket client with the IP address, the port, and the path from the other board, and also assign a callback function to the WebSocket where we'll process the incoming data. In case the connection is dropped, we'll set the reconnect interval to 5 seconds. I'll then move the code to draw on the OLED screen from the loop function to the callback function for the WebSocket event. For the sake of simplicity, I'll assume that all the data coming in is perfect and includes a properly JSON formatted string containing the messages we're interested in from the sensor. To parse the JSON formatted data, I'll use the deserialize JSON function from the Arduino JSON library. I'll check if the deserializing actually works, and if it does, I'll extract each one of the measurements. Then on the OLED screen, set up a little header which, because of the space constraints, it'll be a single letter T for temperature, P for pressure, etc., and set the positions for where I want the data to display. I'll do just four lines with the header and the actual data on the other side of a column. Lastly, to showcase the bidirectionality of the WebSocket connection, I'll send some data back to the WebSocket server. Before uploading the code, I'll remember to install the UAG2 library for communicating with the OLED screen. Then I can hit upload, 
wait a few seconds until that WebSocket connection is established between the ESP32 running the client code and the one running the server. And when that actually happens, I should see the sensor data displayed on the OLED screen. Remember that because of the WebSocket connection, this is updated almost in real time. So if I place my finger once again on top of the sensor, I should be able to see the changes happen almost immediately. So there you have it. We've used a couple of ESP32 boards to run a WebSocket server on one of them and a WebSocket client on the other and have them communicate in real time. I'm also showing that the communication can happen bidirectionally so you can always send back data from the client to the server. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.